Welcome to the fifth video in my FPS tutorial video series. The playlist and GitHub code link will be below. In today's video, we're going to be implementing water movement handling in the FPS controller. I'm also going to be sharing this water maker 3D scene I made, which is just a simple scene to have some visual effects for water. And it has a collision shape, which we'll use to detect when the player is underwater. And then we'll switch to the water movement code rather than ground or air movement. To use the Watermaker 3D scene, I'm going to have the link to a zip folder with it and the scripts that go along with it in the description, uh, but you'll need a world environment. So if you don't know how to, know how to add that, um, you can do so right at the top of your scene here. Click the three dots next to the globe icon and click add environment to scene. And then in the environment um, property there, you can go scroll down to volumetric fog and make sure that's enabled. If you have your default density set to above zero, it's going to make your entire scene foggy. So you can set it to zero so it'll just be foggy on the water. You can place the folder located in the zip file in your Godot project. And then you can place a watermaker3d.tscn in your scene. All this node is is a CSG box 3D with a texture on it for water. And then I have uh, some nodes inside of it to do the visual water fog effect and the camera blur and wave effect for when your camera goes underwater. You can also set the water texture move speed to have the waves animate across the surface of the water. I'm just going to put a block of water in this pool area here to make everything in here swimmable. So yeah, just a quick little node you can add to your scene to make some quick water. It's not super advanced, but it's a good uh, proof of concept, I guess, that could be good for uh, some games if it needs more simple water. You can change the color and uh, change the fog color inside as well. And then just whenever it detects your camera has entered into it, it's going to enable this overlay that gives this kind of wiggly blur effect over your screen to make it look underwater. And one thing you might notice if you put this in your project, the fog can kind of seep out from under the water. And uh, what I did to fix that was just crank up in the project settings under the rendering environment tab. You can click uh, advanced settings on and you can increase the size of the volumetric fog. And that's going to make it more detailed and less prone to seeping out of the surface of the water like that because we're just using like in-game volumetric fog and it really should only like show fog underwater ideally uh, but that's limited by the precision of whatever you set the volumetric fog to so yeah really all this scene is i just have a csg box with the material it just has a noise texture on the normal map and the refraction texture and i have it set to uh tri planar world world tri planar texturing and that creates this nice water look and then the only other thing you might need to know is the water ripple effect is this 2D texture rec node. So um, I'll show you real quick how it works. Um, so anything below this uh, texture will have the shader applied to it. It's drawing on the 2D layer above everything. And then within that, I have the Z index set to negative 10. So this should make it draw below all your UI elements too. You see if I set the Z index to positive 10, it draws over anything on the UI as well, which I don't want. So yeah, just the water ripple overlay will be set to visible when the current camera is being detected as being underwater. Now the important part for the movement code that we're about to write is the swimmable area 3D. It just has a collision shape 3D, which matches the size of the CSG box 3D whenever you change it. And the area 3D here, is just a standard area 3d one thing to note is that you are going to want it on the same layer as your player collision object so if it, if your player object is on another layer besides one check that as well and make sure to leave one checked for the area 3d layer and mask because the camera pose shape cast which checks whether the camera's underwater depends on it being on layer one so if your player is on a different collision layer besides one, um, check the layer and mask for both your player and the one layer on the Area 3D. And yeah, the Area 3D is in a group. Um, you can assign nodes groups in Godot under the node tab when you select the node in the inspector, or next to the inspector rather. 
and it's in a group called water underscore area and that allows the all the nodes which are going to be water or any other type to be <coughs> to be grouped into one category and you'll be able to get all of them and query this group for all nodes within it easily anywhere within your scene um, so you don't have to like search through the node tree you, you can just query this group from the scene tree and then it will give you all the water nodes so we're going to use that in our player script to check if he's underwater every frame and now in the player script we will add the water movement handling code so at the top of my script i'm going to add a variable for swim up speed and i'm only doing swim up speed um, and not just regular swim speed because i'm just using the player's move speed for the swim speed you could define a separate swim speed if you want but i'm just using that so i just have swim up speed as a variable set here and then in the physics process code i already have all my various types of physics broken out into these separate functions so if we are handling no clip or if we're no clipping we're not going to do the rest of the physics um and i have separate functions for like ground and air physics etc so i'm gonna do a very similar thing with water physics here so if we're not underwater, we can do the regular ground or air physics movement code. And then after all of them, I usually call move and slide. And so we're going to create this function, handle water physics. It's going to return true if we're underwater. And we know not to run any of our other movement code if it does return true. So I wrap it in. And if, if not handle water physics, then do the rest of the movement code. Hopefully you can adapt that to your own setup if it's different. And one more thing you'll need to add is this cam aligned wish to variable if you don't have it already. So um, what this is, is a, usually you'd have your regular like input direction. Wish to is where I store the direction that the character wants to move. And usually you do this um, self dot global transform dot basis multiplied by the input direction. That'll get like the world direction you want the character to move in based on the input direction. But usually we don't rotate and like tilt the character body up and down if we're looking up and down, but we do with the camera. So when we multiply the camera's basis by the input direction in a vector three like this, just like you normally would for moving around, this will apply the tilt as well. So like if you're looking upward and you press forward, it's going to move up, not just forward in the horizontal direction you're looking. So make sure you have a cam aligned wish to variable that you can use for the uh, handle water physics functions as well if you don't already. And now let's actually go define this handle water physics function and I'm gonna be putting mine above all the other handle functions I have. So the last one I made was handle crouch. So I'm gonna put mine right here. And um, yeah, you'll see it is a function that takes the delta parameter so that's going to be the delta of the physics process and it returns a bool and it's going to return as to whether we're underwater or not so um, what this line is doing is looping over all the water areas and checking if the area overlaps body self so it's checking if each area overlaps our self which is the character body 3d script we are calling this from so do any of the water areas um, overlap the character body? If not, then none of them do. So we're definitely not underwater in that case. We return false and we'll just do the regular uh, handle air or ground or whatever physics function that we need to do. Um, so yeah, it'll return false. And then otherwise we're going to add in some code in here to handle the underwater movement code a bit more of an explanation on this part right here this is called a lambda function and if you didn't know functions are first class objects in godot which means you can pass a function to another function so here's an example if we have this variable called my funk you can set it to a callable type and that will be able to be set to functions so you can set a variable equal to a function and when you do this the it basically makes a callable object for you and you could call it like this just like a regular function with the arguments that you set and I just ran this a second ago and uh, it's printing this every frame because we're calling it every frame but you can see it just acts as a normal function 
And so what is this part doing right here? We're doing get tree that gets the scene tree. That's like the base of your entire game in Godot. It manages the entire hierarchy of all nodes. And the scene tree has a built-in method, get nodes in group, which we can use to get all the nodes which have the group set of whatever this uh, group name that we pass in is. So we're getting all the, and we, we know these are area 3Ds, so we're getting all the area 3Ds that have this uh, marked water area name and then this dot all is a built-in function on the array object in Godot and it basically runs a check on every single object that um, is in the array so you pass in a function and this is going to act like a test function so you pass in a callable and then it's going to call your function using the uh, it basically just like a for loop iterating over it you pass in your function and then it passes your function each element in the array and then you return whatever check you want to have that element pass so here we're checking this exclamation point is a not operator would be the same as writing not so not area overlap self so as long as the area does not overlap self our current character body this is true. So we're checking if every single element in this array passes the check, does it not overlap ourself? And that would mean we're not overlapping any water areas with the character body 3D. And so we return false. Otherwise, we're going to do our water movement code here and return true. Hopefully that makes sense. And remember, if you're ever curious about what a built-in function does, you can always right click, look up symbol, and that will bring you to the built-in docs in the Godot editor here. And you'll see this all. Just like I said, it returns uh, true or false based on this, calls the provided callable on each element in the array and returns true if the callable returns true for all elements in the array. If the callable returns false for one array element or more, the method returns false. So hopefully that helps someone. I never know what uh, level of detail to go into with these tutorials, but uh, hopefully that helps someone and didn't uh, bore too many people there. And for the actual movement logic, I think it should be pretty simple here. For if we're not on the floor, we're going to subtract the gravity times the delta, just like we normally would to apply gravity, but we're also going to multiply it by 0 0.1 because we want it to be a lot less gravity underwater. And remember this project settings dot get setting function that allows us to just grab whatever is set in our project settings uh, for, for really any project setting. Um, here we have physics 3D default gravity. You'll, you'll notice that's the same name as the property here. Could grab any of these if you want. It's a useful function to be able to use. And so next we are going to set the velocity based on the cam aligned wister that I have set already that I showed before, multiplied by the move speed times the delta. And so a lot of times we wouldn't do this multiplication by delta and we would just set the move speed to whatever we're looking but since we're underwater we're doing plus equals rather than just like setting it equals and we're multiplying by delta to make it like a slow acceleration towards the move speed to make it feel more underwater like and have a little bit of a resistance feeling like the water is pushing against us when we try to move and then if i press the jump action which i have bound to space and if you don't have a jump action you might have to set that in your project settings input map tab if we press jump then I am going to add to the Y velocity, the swim up speed times the delta, just like before. And this is just to make them swim up a bit faster because usually in games, I feel like when you press space, you just want to quickly get out of the water and it feels natural to have them go up more quickly. And then this to add a bit more of a water feel. So like when you fall down into the water, it's going to slow you down a bit. Um, to get the feeling like you have like a bit of water resistance, you're pushing down in the water and you can't move through it as easily as air. So we're just lerping or smoothly interpolating and smoothly moving the velocity towards zero and setting the new velocity. So we're smoothly interpolating it towards zero by this amount. And I use two here. This is the value I found to work. So the second parameter there acts like a percent towards zero or a percent to move towards the first parameter. So by multiplying two times delta, we're moving it a small amount towards zero every frame. If you set this higher, then it's going to move faster towards zero and the damping is going to be stronger. It's going to be harder to move underwater. It's going to slow you down faster as well. So that is all you need for your movement code and you're all done. 
And now if you try this out, you'll be able to swim inside these Watermaker 3D nodes. And uh, I guess you could also make your own very similar solution to this, like if you have any area 3D you put in your scene and uh, mark it under the water underscore area group name, you'll be able to swim in it like this. And uh, it's not gonna have the visual effect unless you used my Watermaker node, but um, yeah, feel free to use uh, any code, whatever in this tutorial, it's all CC0 public domain. You can copy it, modify it, use it for whatever you want. No need to credit me. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. I'm planning to add a bunch more features to this character controller, so stay tuned for them. And of course, all the source code is available for free on GitHub. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. And thank you for watching.